Hi, in this tutorial we're going to see how to make use of the Parse Core APIs in combination with Ionic Framework to give us a cloud storage solution uh, in our Android and iOS mobile application. So Parse Core is, uh, is a Facebook company now and it's a cloud solution that although it's not entirely the same, it's similar to other storage options such as Firebase, Dropbox, Data Store, um, and uh, PouchDB. It's just another option uh, for you uh, in your exploration on how you wish to store data into the cloud in your mobile application. So let's go ahead and start things off. Let's go ahead and start by creating a new project on our desktop. Let's go ahead and say uh, Ionic Start Parse App Blank. All right, so let's go ahead and navigate into our new project. And we're gonna go ahead and add the Android platform. All right, so if you are using a Mac, this tutorial does work for Mac as well, and you could go ahead and add the iOS platform. Um, but for simplicity, I'm going to stay strictly Android because uh, it covers a wider audience. More people can relate to it. So with your new project created, let's go ahead and navigate on over to the uh, Parse website. We need to go ahead and download the latest JavaScript uh, Parse SDK. So on the Parse website, go ahead and download the production version because it's minified. I'm going to go ahead and save that to our desktop here. And then let's crack open that file, we, the folder we created with our project, and go into www.js, and then let's drag and drop that uh, library file over. So with that said and done, in your favorite text editor, uh, go ahead and open up your project. We need to go ahead and add the parse library now. So inside the www folder and then the index.html file, uh, right above the app.js, we're going to go ahead and include that library. Let's see what it was called. It's called uh, parse 1.35. So it's now added into our project. Now I did do some research and I tried looking for an Angular JS wrapper for this. I didn't find one that I liked. So for this tutorial, we're going to stick strictly to uh, vanilla JavaScript, uh, their their vanilla version of the SDK, uh, no wrappers. So with that said, let's go ahead and open up our app.js. We're going to clean this up a little bit, make it more usable. Uh, usable. I mean, you don't have to, but I do because it, it uh, I don't know, it makes me crazy if I don't. All right. So the first thing that we want to do inside the app.js file, uh, as far as code, is inside the Onic platform.ready, at the bottom, we're going to say uh, parse.initialize. I spelled that correctly. Looks right. Parse.initialize. And then we're going to uh, type in two IDs here. The first one being the app ID and the second one being the JavaScript ID. So going back into our Firefox, let's go ahead and uh, traverse to our uh, control panel here. We're going to go find our keys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and copy the application key. And we are going to copy the JavaScript key. Now please do me a favor, do not use my keys. Please register your own Parse app. Um, this is just for example, and I will probably delete this at any given time. Uh, so, so please use your own. All right, with Parse, parse initialized in our run, uh, let's go ahead and, and create a new controller. This is gonna be the controller that is gonna be used throughout the rest of our application here. So example.controller. We're going to call it example controller. And it's only going to use the scope. So inside this controller, we're going to have two 
uh, functions. The first function is going to be called scope save person. And it's going to take a first name and a last name. And the second function is going to be scope dot get people. And it's going to uh, take an object called params. And we'll get to that uh, later in this tutorial. So starting with the save person function, uh, a lot of this is going to be copied straight from the parse uh, documentation. It's, it's pretty well uh, written out. So we're going to say var people object. We're going to create a new object. Uh, parse calls it a class. And we're going to say parse.object.extend people object. And now we're going to create a new uh, instance of this object called person. And now what we can do is, now that we have an instance of this object, uh, it's all bound directly to parse uh, for us with little intervention. So we can say person.set first name, and we can say first name, person.set last name, last name, and then finally person.save, and then we're going to pass a null and an empty object. And that will go ahead and save our new object into the cloud of parse. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a function for querying parse. And I'm doing kind of like an all-in-one function. You can choose to separate it out. That's why I added params. And we'll get there in a second. So let's go ahead and say var people object again equals parse.object.extend. And we're going to say people object. This time we're going to say var query equals new parse dot query. And we're going to pass in the people object. And now we can get down to business. The first thing that we want to do is we want to check to see if there were any parameters passed. If there are no parameters, then we're going to get every object or every person record inside of parse. Uh, so everything. Uh, so we're going to say if params not equal to undefined. Then we're going to look particularly for two different uh, properties. We're going to say if params dot last name is not equal to uh, undefined, then we can say query dot equal to last name params dot last name. So it exists, so we're going to use it. Uh, we can also say if params dot first name is not equal to undefined. We can say query dot equal to first name params dot first name. So we've just uh, declared an option to where we can uh, filter by first name and last name if they are present. So moving along, we're going to say query dot find. And again, a lot of this is just taken directly from the documentation here on um, parse. We're going to say we're going to pass in the success uh, callback here function results. And then we have the option for an error callback, in which case we're going to say alert, error, error.code, error.message. All right, now getting down to business inside of the success callback. This is where, where it matters. So we're going to say alert. And the first thing that we want to do is uh, display how many records were returned. So successfully returned result.length people. And now we are going to loop through all of the people that re were returned. So for var i equals zero, i less than result. This is plural. I forgot, so 
results dot length i plus plus we're going to say var object equals results i now we can say console dot log object dot id and then object dot get first name plus object dot get last name. All right, that wasn't so hard, was it? All right, the final thing that we want to do is we want to create a small, very simple front end for this. So going back into your index.html, find your ion content, and we're going to say ng controller equals example controller. And we're going to create a series of buttons. I'm going to say button class equals button ng click. We're going to leave this blank for now because I'm going to shortcut it and copy uh, a couple times. I'm going to say leave that blank as well. Say button. So let's go ahead and copy this to save me some typing. I'm going to copy this and paste it four more times. All right, going back into your ng clicks, the first one is going to be save person Nick Raboy. Second one will be save person Maria Campos. Oops. The third one will be save person Bruce Raboy. And again, I'm just simplifying this. I'm making buttons that do it all constant. Uh, I assume that in your real production app, you'll have input uh, fields, and you'll be able to save user input. But this is for simplicity. So the next two functions are going to be the ones to query. So get people. And this is going to say uh, print all people. And get people, and we're going to pass this one an object, uh, last name, Raboy. And we're going to say print all for boys. All right. So with a little bit of luck, when we compile this right now, it should work fine. So we're going to say Ionic build Android. And it'll always take a, a little longer to compile the first time. Doesn't matter how fast your computer is. All right, so it built successfully. Now we're going to install it. All right, it's now installed. Let's crack it open. Let's open up uh, the ADB Logcat to view our logs as we go. Let's open our app. And let's go ahead and save Nick Raboy. All right, did any errors happen? I'm not sure, but a good way to test is, let's see what happens when we say print all people. Successfully returned one people. Well, I, did, I didn't say person. I didn't put any logic to say people versus person, but okay. And I look at our logs here, and it went and it printed out our, um, our ID and name. And if we go back into our Firebase, uh, not Firebase, uh, parse, uh, dashboard here, we can open up our people object and see that uh, this object is now there. So let's go ahead and save a few more people. Save Maria Campos, save Bruce Raboy, and let's say print all people. Return three people. Uh, again, they're all appearing in our ADB logs. Going back into uh, parse, Let's go ahead and refresh the object. I think it's being a little slow. 
All right, yes. So I refresh their dashboard and all three objects are there. So let's go ahead and test out the print all row boys. It should return two. And it did. Our uh, condition uh, was a success. It, it only printed row boys. It did not print Maria Campos. All looks good. So as you can see, this is a uh, great alternative if you don't want to use SQLite in your application because it does uh, closely resemble uh, SQL queries. So again, this is a, uh, a small quick tutorial regarding how to save and get information from the Parse Cloud, a Facebook product.